VIP access. VIP access with Aniko and Africa Loud. Hello and welcome to VIP Access. It's yet another exciting week and I'm very happy to be back here at Nairobi Street Kitchen. Thank you so much Nairobi Street Kitchen for always giving us a home. So this week I'm super excited because I have an amazing individual right here on VIP Access. They are a multidisciplinary artist when it comes to music, production, stage design, they excel. Welcome, Bakita. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> How are you? I'm amazing. Fantastic. Yes, it's really excited. great to see yeah. you. Thank you just you. literally rolled here from Santuri. Yes. What's I'm happening at Santuri? Um, so I'm enrolled in the intermediate production class. Just, you know, polishing up a few things expanding the repertoire and getting you know elevation in this scene so nice yeah, it's really exciting. there are a lot of dope um especially women at santuri yes. like djing and learning production that's yes. really cool yes i mean santuri is an amazing amazing um space platform they have amazing teachers they're doing a lot for the scene the music scene in general yeah so it's really cool to be part of that process to be part of their um I guess now growing family yeah, and yeah, to get expertise from people who've been in the industry for so long. That's nice, yeah. that's nice. Um, so for those who are watching us or listening to you, <laughs> to Bakita, um, what is your full name? Is that a stage name or is that your um, government name? Yeah, so Bakita is actually my government name. My names are Bakita Gikonyo. Um, I go by Bakita just because I like the name. I feel like growing up it made me very unique because I didn't know a lot of people called Bakita. And yeah, coming into myself and being comfortable in the name because you can imagine it being a unique name. Kids always have a lot of funny things to mm. say. So yeah, coming into myself, I was really owning it and carrying into my music and art. I just wanted to keep that feeling of ownership as well. So. Yeah, I use my name on everything that I produce. Mm, that's amazing. And and one of the things I really wanted to talk to you is about, uh, you know, being yourself and uh, being yourself unapologetically because you're a multidisciplinary artist. So when it comes to fashion, design, production, music, um, you express yourself in all these different forms of art. Um, so how do you do it? How do you balance all these different forms of art? Honestly, they all balance themselves out. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah, I feel like to being a creative, you can't have just one yeah. role. You have to kind of juggle a few yeah. things for even that one role to make yeah. sense. So my visual art complements my music, which complements the design, which complements the, you know, styling. So yeah, everything just kind of meshes together beautifully. So even mm. when one needs more attention, it will still kind of add value to the other one mm. and vice versa so yeah it all do, works do you want to name drop some cool festivals <laughs> that you have been part of the creative yes. and the visual work yes yes um i've worked with beneath the baobabs for the past um let's say maybe four years in a very official capacity the last two years i'm one of the resident stage designers which is really fun <laughs> um so yeah see you guys there in december <laughs> I've also worked at Ongala Festival, which was in um, Bagamoyo just before COVID, which was really cool. Um, yeah, and hoping to expand the, you know, space of taking up space in this, yeah, wow. stage Wow, expand the space of taking up space. Yes. I love that, I love that. <laughs> so let's get into your music, you know, you, yeah. your voice. Eh. <laughs> Did you always have this voice? Because even your speaking voice is so powerful. And then when you, you when you sing, even before I start to define a genre, when you sing, your voice already gives me um, that vibe that it is a chameleon of sorts, that you're able to, uh, you know, kind of have different tones. Is it? I'd can say, you? Yeah. How can I mean, you describe your voice? Hmm. <laughs> wow, I'd say, honestly, I'd say powerful. I'd say very expressive. I'd say very raw, it, I feel, so I'd let myself be the conduit of feeling through my music and through whatever it is my spirit and, you know, the guides are trying to channel through me. So, yeah, I just let myself express as fully as possible, not to show off too much, but I have a very great 
kind of octave range, so we can do everything. I can hit low lows, I can mm. hit the high highs, I can do the middle, and like you said, yeah, chameleon. It depends on what it is I'm trying to achieve, what mm. I'm trying to put forward. Is it supposed to be sultry? Is it supposed to be light and airy? You can do it all. Yeah. <laughs> And g going into some of your past um, discography, there's Chamomile, there's also Purge, mm -hmm. and there's another EP. Are you able to take me through your discography, and especially Chamomile, which also had a, um, some abbreviations, like protect mm -hmm. your energy. I think that's something you're very conscious about, and you put that mm -hmm. out already, like, I love to protect my energy, and I love to uh, advocate for that. So if you could tell me more about your discography and that particular aspect of your art. Um, so yeah, all of my music is inspired by the need for understanding of the self, the need for protection of the self and expression of self, um, largely also through understanding the different processes that affect your, you as a person, as mm. a creative especially. So it's very much heavy on understanding that mental health always has a part to play in understanding yourself and being able to put out work. Um, trying to see how to balance between the needs of society and the needs of your own, you know, so that you're not ever um, at a place where you're giving away too much or not able to sustain your heart and your soul. So, yeah, my discography all covers that um, through Chamomile, which stands, which Okay, breaking down the abbreviation. First of all, it's thing. so funny because <laughs> the first time I saw the title, I was like, <laughs> what is chamomile? Because in my language, in Luo, chamo is actually e. When I saw chamomile, I just read it as chamo. So I'm like, mm. chamo <laughs> meal, which, which part of Luo is this? So that's quite interesting because that also means something in Luo. Yes. Oh, I, I actually hadn't known that up until you said that today, which is really cool. <laughs> And I love that it has a more Kenyan spin right? on the feeling of the yeah. name. Um, and in many ways, it's, yeah, it's telling you to eat yourself up, to eat up yeah. the scene, to eat up everything about yourself and exactly. to live in that power. So, yeah, it works within itself. Yeah. But essentially, when I was making it, um, camo was kind of like the need to camouflage or mm. to wear all of these different colors mm. and coats to fit into different spheres of the creative scene mile because I'm running a mile trying to, you know, get all of this together and PYE because you always have to protect your energy while you do it. So, yeah. So do you produce all your music? Ooh. Or what, what, what role do you play also in the production? Because we just spoke about you coming from Santuri. You're currently upping your production skills. So tell me about the production. Um, yeah. Oh, so for the longest time, I actually worked with this amazing producer called um, Lemmy. He's based in Kilifi. He also works with the Beneath the Baobabs mm. Festival. And we met in high school, so we had kind of always vibed on the same musical playing field. I also play piano, so we'd always be able to balance what it is we were trying to achieve. In that, some of the songs now I co-produced in that I was able to put down piano riffs that he then... Um, used and pre created the whole now um, beat around. Um, yeah, now personally where I've gotten um, kind of just growing all of that mm. because, you know, I guess going through COVID made me realize a lot of things, made me realize that there's a lot more that I can do to be self-sustaining in this music sphere especially. Mm. And I started kind of dabbling a lot more in live music, which is a lot of why I'd even say my voice is heavy on expression because yeah. I really believe in, you know, the rawness of creation and that feeling and in discovering and trying to sit in that a lot more, I started to realize that I wanted to be able to tailor my sound a lot more to what it is that I want. And yeah, so I decided to take up the production class um, essentially, which was, which is going really great. Um, I also have a um, yeah, like I said, a long background in piano, long background in vocals. Um, I had trained in ABRSM growing up, so I guess all of this is kind of just making all of that make sense yeah. and putting all of the knowledge that I had yeah. from then, putting it forward, and yeah, I'm really excited for this journey and the mu music that will be coming out of this. <laughs> No one is ready, I'll just say that, no one is ready. <laughs> so, so that means the future for uh, Bakita Productions, you will be heavily involved, right? Highly, 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 highly. Already, visually, I'm completely 
involved and engrossed in my visual process. All of my music videos I've created, directed, um, co-styled if not styled, um, built the sets and managed the production. So um, that was always something that was very fulfilling to me. So now being able to do that in the mm -hmm. music as well is going to really elevate just having my signature put forward in a way that I resonate with. That's quite interesting. Well done. I can't wait to hear Thank your new you. music. So I also wanted to ask you about how you identify as non-binary. Um, what, what does that mean for you? And what's your experience with, with, uh, with how you identify, especially being around an industry which is, I feel now, very open to different individuals and different people who identify however way? What is your experience? Um, wow, so I always kind of knew that I was just this awkward kind of being yeah. and this was never even to say that womanhood was something that I was like, oh, I'm, I'm not a woman. Like, for sure I don't identify with what it could be perceived to be as a woman, yes. but I do identify with the feeling of being a black woman, mm. of being an African woman, because that's an existence that you can't erase, yes. even as a non-binary being. So, yeah, coming into understanding different terminologies for what it is through expression outside of sexuality, I came to realize that I enjoy feeling, or rather I largely feel um, so much larger than just being in one binary space, which is either male or female. Yeah. I feel like even in, yeah, much like my creative process, I'm able to do all of these things. Why do I need to have to put something that doesn't feel like it can be bound into one terminology that will end up meaning that I'm being misperceived. Yeah. So, yeah. Took the risk, started going and using my pronouns as they, them, which honestly was so fulfilling. And even when people don't get it, I don't even like get too caught up in it. Yeah. For sure, I'll maybe correct here and there, but at the end of the day, I know it's for me. I know that my perception of myself feels solid in me representing myself of course and yeah and in the industry I'd say it's opening up a lot more starting out when I came out I had a lot of you know naysayers and people being like oh yeah you know some people just now that's when they're coming out and it's like I don't know at the end of the day we're all growing in this growing as people yeah. growing into ourselves and yeah it, it's been a journey <laughs> Um, it was my coming out story also wasn't the most um, great just because I had an altercation with a police person at the now closed Jay's bar, which was really hectic. I actually got beaten up just for expressing in a queer way. And through that, I kind of just realized that, oh, you know... Oh, I didn't realize that was you. Oh, yeah, that was me. Jeez. Yeah. Sorry about that. Thank you. And yeah, through that, I kind of just realized that I can't actually just be silent about it because until then I was like, okay, if you know, you know, but it's never really enough to just know for yourself. Sometimes you just have to stand out yeah. and speak about it. And the more you speak about it, the more normalized it gets. So I think creatively, that's where we are at an, at, as an industry yeah. because we've taken enough time of queer people coming into the scene, coming out as themselves and telling people, this is who I am and seeing the creative scene opening up to us and just being like, yeah, even us, we're queer in different ways, you know, because I feel like everyone is slightly queer in some yeah. way, especially if you're creative, the way you think isn't the way everyone else thinks, which is queer thought essentially. Yeah. So yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> like Hazi always says that we are all on some sort of spectrum Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And by the way, there are a couple of dope queer people in the industry. Kuyo. Yes, yes I love Kuyo. Um, oh my gosh. Jarrell. Mm -hmm. And yes. I'm sure there are so many others. They but are. those are the ones like I know closely and mm -hmm. all of them have had recent projects. Mm -hmm. So it's really nice to see queer people take exactly. their own space and ex express themselves the way they want to. Exactly. That's dope. I mean, it's hectic because of our government from time to yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we do have to be very wary of our of safety and of expression, course. but it's still so fulfilling and we're part of a process of revolution that's going to last longer than our stay in this plane, which mm. is the most fulfilling thing I think you can do as an artist, knowing that you're part of the change that will end up helping generations down the line mm. so yeah yeah 
And um, what was it like growing up? Where did you grow up? How was um, family relations? Do you have siblings? And also, did you have supportive parents or friends? Mm. Honestly, growing up um, was interesting. I do have very supportive parents. Mm. Um, my mom has been especially supportive ever since she's been dabbling in and out of music, um, radio, um, artist ex expression, and now she works as a civil society um, kind of worker. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, in that sphere, just the need for, you know, speaking up, speaking out has always been hammered in our way of feeling and being. Um, she's very conscious of um, yeah, our expression as Kenyans and all of that feeling. So it's been really, it's been dope to have, I guess, my mom as oh, part of my journey. That's so nice. Yes. Like she's been working with you this journey of yes. personal expression of your art. Exactly. That's so amazing. Personal expression from the jump, from that's the jump, amazing. the jump, the jump. And that's one of the most, I'd say, holistic things that has ever, that, you know, guides me still till of today. Course. Because... Yeah, I don't think I'd even be able to have my artistic um, prowess, even my artistic um, uh, kind of vision without yeah. having had that space to express myself and to be able to understand my own consciousness yeah. and to hope to inspire people to be part of their own conscious, yeah. you know, sphere of thinking. So, um, yeah, and my dad, starting out, he was very supportive as well. I'd say he'd be trying as his, okay, let me say he was trying his level best to understand <laughs> everything that I was doing, you know, yeah. as an African parent, someone is, hey, kiasi kiasi, they dropped out of university to wow. pursue this thing, he was like, really, what are you up to? So we did have a lot of um, tough ash when we were, when I was still coming up and growing mm. out of, you know, uh, I guess, um, adolescence yes, and yes. everything. Yeah. So, but coming into adulthood and him seeing how much time and effort and I'm putting in and seeing how um, much the universe, I guess, is just opening up to my process, mm. he really has become very, very supportive. So I'm really grateful to have parents who are part of that process. Mm. And I do have a sibling who's also creatively inclined. I'd say all of us in the family are either in advocacy or in creation, which is amazing. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's really it's really cool and yeah. Amazing, amazing. I think one thing I'm always talking to artists um, here on VIP Access is some of the things working for them and some of the things or um, what they would like for the industry to do to help them better their art, their craft, their business. So, so far since you started being in the industry professionally, you've been on different um, spheres. You know, you are at, in the production, design, visual art, and also as a musician and as a, as a performer. So what are some of the things that have been working for you? And uh, what are some of the things you feel need to work better? Mm. I'd say for sure one thing that has been working for me is now the interaction with creatives on the ones, which is amazing. Being able, we're all taking on and taking off different hats to fit in all these different spheres, which is has really inspired me. Growing up, I was always, you know, dabbling in all of these things, and my parents were like, "Oh, you know, you need to choose one at the end." Which when I came into this like scene, it was like, "No, you actually don't need to choose yeah. one," which has been amazing. So. Yeah, being part of that, it's also great to see how many creative ent entities are present um, who also help foster different artistic expression. Now, for instance, going back to Beneath the Baobabs, I, the first stage I ever even volunteered on was at one of their festivals now, maybe like six years ago, which has, yeah, really changed the way that I was looking at even just visual expression. Mm. and. Because of that, seeing where I've come up until now, having a space to be able to play and understand all of these things really did help prepare me for this. So one thing I'd love to see more is more spaces like that, more, you know, investment from mm. our government, from even foreign entities mm. into our creative scene in a way of that course. helps foster spaces where artists can come and learn and express and be part of that process. Also, the seriousness of how this is taken, because 
Again, a lot of the corporate world sees art and music and expression as a hobby mm. or as a by the way, which is which honestly even reflects in the kind of um, laws that we have to protect us in the industry yeah. that also reflects in the way that we are taken in spaces and the seriousness that we are given, which is also very unfortunate. But I feel like, yeah, if you're able to hammer down and make sure that our seriousness is taken to account and people make sure that they um, are kinder with the artists around them because they're actually building something that helps even foster people who are in the same um, corporate world. I mean, everyone listens to music. If not, they maybe enjoy looking at art. If not, they maybe enjoy reading a book. So mm. art creation is always part of your life and respecting the process and the people behind that is so essential. Yeah. And I really think is a big part of what will even take us forward as a country. Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Um, in terms of your um, creative process, how would you describe that um, when it comes to the art, the visual art, and also the music? Mm. And also, what are some of your biggest inspirations? Hmm. I'd say my process, again, is just inspired through a lot of in introspection. Okay. I feel like a lot of the times when I'm stuck in being unable to introspect and reflect through everything I've been going through, I'm not able to produce anything. Yeah. So the more in touch I am with myself, the more I'm able to give forward. And I guess it's a kind of balance. My favorite number is even eight, just because of the need for this balance and this hourglass that you keep feeling yeah. through feeling in the other space. Um, so... Yeah, my process is inspired by that, both visually and musically. Yeah. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Um, as we wrap up the interview, I just want to first thank you so much for coming through to VIP Access. Thank you for having and me. And for being so awesome and legendary at what you do. Awesome. I just really love to see individuals, um, you know, exercise their creativity. I think there are certain artists who are musicians and they could also do something else and something mm -hmm. else but they're not like putting their hand into it so mm -hmm. i appreciate you for how far you're expressing your art you know to festivals mm -hmm. we see the beautiful um, setups but sometimes we don't know who's behind that so it's mm -hmm. nice to meet one of those artists thank you um and i wish you well in your in your learning on production thank can't you. wait to hear your next you. couple thank of records you. um that you're producing yourself yes. Any message you want to give to um, anybody who's listening, whether they know Bakita or not, um, what, whatever you want to tell them? Um, first, I want to say thank you to you for having me on this beautiful channel. And your work is amazing. Oh, the fact that you're you. putting artist stories forward and being so intentional with the questions that you ask is all part of the process. Thank you so much. I always try so much to do. <laughs> everyone justice so when you say that it makes me feel so good genuinely yeah and to anybody out there watching to all the creatives to all the people man love the people around you respect yeah. them give them time yeah give them space if they need space don't look at people as competition just do you and in doing you and in supporting the people around you to do themselves we all collectively grow so yeah, man, be fresh, be yourself. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much, Bakita, for coming Thank through you. to VIP Access. That's where we're wrapping off the show this week. Thank you so much, Bakita, Lovely. for coming through to VIP Access. It's been such an amazing interview and to see you, to meet you, to celebrate your work. Everyone listening or watching from wherever, thank you so much for tuning in. Remember to catch VIP Access on Nation FM every Sundays from 7 to 8 p.m. We are also in Ghana on MX24 TV every yeah. Tuesdays and Saturdays. Thank you so much for supporting. You can also follow us on uh, TikTok. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram, Aniko TV or VIP Access. Please, you also have to check out Bakita's music and art. They are out there and you'll definitely enjoy their music and art. Thank you so much. Asante, Asante sana. VIP Access Season 4 is proudly supported by the Australian High Commission.